Welcome. So in this lesson, we're going to be talking about determining quadratic rules. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Now, there are three forms in which a quadratic rule can take. So let's go through each of those. So the first one is going to be this one right here. This is when you've been given two x-intercepts. So b and c here are the x-intercepts. You can also notice that we have this a. This a is my dilation factor. And we always have to remember to find what that a is going to be. So don't forget the a at the front. People often do forget that dilation factor. The next form a quadratic rule can take is like this. This is when you've been given the turning point or vertex, and the vertex is given by h, k. So the h and k gives you the turning point. Once again, I want to draw your attention to the dilation factor right here. So this a at the front is my dilation factor, and it's important that we remember that. The last way a quadratic form could look like is like this. Now, this is when you've been given three arbitrary points, so just three random points. Uh, if you were asked to solve for this with three arbitrary points, you'd have to use your CAS calculator, and we'll talk about that a bit later. All right, let's jump into some examples here and see if we can determine the quadratic rule. So this one, we want to determine the quadratic rule for this. What we want to take note of is the key features that we've been given. We've been given the x-intercepts. So that means we're going to be using this quadratic rule right here. Again, what you really have to remember is don't forget that dilation factor at the front, which is a. Then it's going to be x minus b, x minus c. The next thing that you're going to do is put in the information about the x-intercepts. We have an x-intercept at negative 2 and 1 at 1. So that means what it's going to be here is x plus 2, x minus 1. Remember, you have to swap the sign of your x-intercepts. Because if you were trying to solve for your x-intercepts by looking at this rule, remember what you would do here, let me grab another color, you would take this x plus 2, you would set it equal to 0 and then solve for x. So x would be equal to negative 2, which is what you can see over here. Or for this one, you would take this, you would set it equal to 0 and then solve for x. So x is going to be equal to 1, as you can see here. So important that you're getting those signs correct. The next step that we have to do here is we have to solve for what this a is. So what is my dilation factor going to be? So sub in the other point that we've been given. So we're going to sub in. 0, negative 2, to solve for a. So we're going to sub in this point to solve for a. So that means in my x spot, I'm going to put a 0, and in my y spot, I'm going to put a negative 2. So negative 2, a, 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1. That means I'm going to get negative 2 is equal to a. This is going to be 2. This is going to be negative 1. Negative 2 is going to be equal to 2 times that is negative 2, a. Therefore, a is equal to 1. So that means my dilation factor is 1. I can now write down what my final answer is going to be. It's going to be y is equal to, in my a spot I'm going to put a 1. Remember when your coefficient is 1 you don't have to write anything. It's just x plus 2, x minus 1. That's what my answer is going to be for the first one. y is equal to x plus 2, x minus 1. And there we go. And there is my answer.